Welcome back to my filmmaking journey. I started this segment because I wanted to have a way to communicate more with you guys about my ideas, my concepts, things I want to make, things I want to do, career goals that I'm pursuing. And I want to use this episode to talk about how Notes from Melanie is doing at festivals, talk to you guys about some of the new festivals that have accepted it so you guys can know ahead of time if you want to go see it, and also talk about something that I think is discussed but maybe not enough, and that is... Um, what it feels like to be rejected from a festival. And I also wanna make sure you stay tuned to the very end of the episode because this is sponsored by Skillshare and I'm gonna be talking about them at the end of the video. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So Notes from Melanie, our new short, had its premiere at the Short Sweet Film Festival in Cleveland, Ohio. I went there with my buddy John Flickinger who also has a bit of a role in the film and we had a great time. It was encouraging and inspiring to see so many people who had come from far away to see the movie and meet them and talk with them. Obviously I was nervous because I had watched the film so many times by myself or with just friends or people who were reviewing the film like to give me notes and feedback so that I could try to make it better. And I had never really experienced it with a big crowd before. And so as any filmmaker knows, when you first show your movie to a crowd, it's like it takes on a different life. You can see how other people are reacting to it and you hope that they notice subtle things and nuances that you tried to incorporate into it and when they do it's just so gratifying and you're, you're like yes okay cool you guys are feeling this and and you're understanding what i was going for and it was just a wonderful experience honestly to be there amongst so many like-minded people who appreciated movies and so many people who talked to me about wanting to make films as well and what they were going for and who their inspirations were it was just a great experience and and so so much fun it was a good time it was uh I think it stole the whole show, in my opinion. I think the lens flare agrees with you that's happening right now. <laughs> Dude, this is this vlog is directed by J.J. Abrams, Chris. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. That honestly was a really, really good time. I uh, met a lot of really cool people. Like people, I, I'm losing my voice from talking so loud, actually. But um, that was just kind of inspiring to see it on the big screen and like hear people like enjoying it and just like laughing along with uh, the funny parts. And honestly, that was just really fucking it cool. was it was my heart was pulsating the whole time it was i was a little bit i was like oh shit it's like surreal you're seeing yourself as a big yellow insect man up on the screen <laughs> and people are laughing at you and yes. it's, it's like it was a good feeling it was really fun it's perfect i think it went as well as it possibly could have i agree so for those who haven't had a chance to see the film yet i am trying to do my best to get it in as many festivals as possible as most of you know that means it's up to them to accept it or not and some have rejected it, and some have accepted it. We'll talk about that soon, but if you haven't seen the film, I can tell you some places it has been accepted to that are coming up very soon. On April 20th, the film is gonna be shown at the Hollywood Comedy Shorts Festival. Now this is special for a lot of reasons. For one, I got the movie to California. That was something I really wanted to do. And for two, it's gonna be shown at the TCL Chinese Theater, the iconic theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And they project through DCP, which is the best way to project a film in a theater as far as I'm concerned. And so I am just so happy that that's happening. April 20th, uh, if people are around that area and you want to go see it, please do check it out. Get a ticket, uh, support a tiny movie from Ohio from a bunch of people who are just trying to create something. And I'm really happy it's it's being there. That's just, that's a dream come true to get a movie in that theater. That's just awesome. On April 21st, it's gonna be shown at the Indie Film Wisconsin Festival. That's in Watertown, Wisconsin. It's a small theater. It's a charming little festival. It's a, called the Town Cinema. It's their first year and I'm excited that our film is gonna be there. So if you're in that area, that's a place you can see it. On April 27th, it's gonna show at the Canton Film Festival here in Ohio, I'll be there. So it'll be nice to meet you. If you guys are in the area, you can come and see it. And on May 9th, it's gonna show at the Philadelphia Independent Film Festival. So if you're in Philadelphia, you get a chance to see it. It recently showed a couple days ago at the Arizona International Film Festival as well. And so I'm excited that it's going outside of Ohio. Now I've submitted to many other festivals throughout the year, but their notification dates are spread out all the way until like October. And so there's still going to be a lot of places that I don't know whether or not they accept it or deny it. And I will give you guys updates either through a video like this or on Twitter so you guys can hopefully see it. I have submitted to places outside of the United States. A few of them have already denied it. And that's just, it happens. It's something to be expected. And I would like to talk about that a little bit because when I made Auditorium 6, I remember so many festivals rejecting it. And I remember feeling just really disheartened by that at first. 
until I started talking to other filmmakers, good filmmakers, like people who were already established. And I was talking to them in private and they were like, oh my God, yeah, my films were rejected all the time. So how should you react to your film getting rejected from a festival? How should you process that as a filmmaker? Does that mean your film isn't good enough? Does that mean you didn't work hard enough? Maybe, that's possible. It's possible that your film just isn't good enough. Perhaps it's not up to par technically. Perhaps the sound wasn't as good as it could be or the video presentation, or maybe the film just isn't really that good and the festival didn't like it or the judges didn't like it. Sometimes a festival can be filled with like multiple judges and maybe three out of five liked your film and those two who hated it, it's just no longer unanimous. And because of those two who hated it, your film's not gonna get shown. And that can happen too. There are so many variables, but one of the biggest reasons your film can get rejected that sometimes isn't discussed that much is that it just didn't fit in line with the theme they were going for. Sometimes a festival picks a theme for the year. Maybe they just wanna really talk about a certain specific type of film and they wanna show those types of movies. They wanna have a very serious festival. Maybe they're very documentary heavy. It helps to do research about the festival before you submit to it because you might see that the films they generally accept are serious dramas, or maybe they're more comedy-based or sci-fi horror-based. So doing research about the type of film that's normally shown there can really help you to submit to a festival that might want to show your film more so than others. At the same time, a festival judge might start choosing great films early on. It's always best to submit as early as possible so that you can get in their brains as quick as possible, because if you wait too long, you're going to be competing for spots that have already been filled by films that have been accepted way ahead of time, at least in their minds, they've accepted these films. Like these films have to be in our festival. You know, they haven't set out the acceptance letter yet, but they know they really wanna show this film. So the earlier you submit, the better. But as those judges watch those first few films, like early in the submissions process, and they start to pick out different types of themes, and they realize that they are creating a uh, feel for the festival. Despite the fact that your film might be really good, they might just not pick it because it doesn't fit in with what they're building for their show. In the case of our film, I'm glad that I did a lot of research ahead of time, like for specific festivals and, and what I thought they would like to see, the films that they normally are excited to show. I also targeted a lot of comedy-based festivals because the film's a comedy. And so you have to be smart with the way you submit. But when a film is rejected, it, it's always gonna hurt a little bit. I mean, I open up the email and it says, your submission status has been updated. And you go to it and you're like, oh, not accepted, okay. And the worst part is sometimes they never write you. They won't tell you why. You'll just get a little PNG image. Sometimes the least a festival can do though is tell you why your film wasn't good enough. Some of them do, some of them won't. You just have to deal with it. And I've had to learn to deal with that over the past couple years. And for some festivals, you can respectfully email them and say, thank you very much for watching my film. I am curious as to what we could do to improve in the future. Do you guys offer screener notes? And many times they will get back to you quickly and respectfully and explain exactly why your film wasn't accepted. And sometimes it is for the exact reasons I just said. Sometimes it has nothing to do with quality. But I also know filmmakers who are trying to get out there who submitted to like 20 festivals and they all just denied it. And then your film just kind of sits there and you resort to uploading it to YouTube and hoping that somebody stumbles across it. And that happens sometimes too. And that's never a good situation. Sometimes though, that might be because your film just wasn't good enough and you just haven't learned enough yet. I know that for a fact because I've dealt with that many times. I have made countless shitty short films. I mean, tons. It's impossible to make something good right out of the gate. You can't. You have to make shit. You have got to make so much shit before you can even make something remotely competent. And in my case, I know that's true. I spent tons of years as a teenager just making amateur garbage, having fun with my friends, and that's fine. You're supposed to do that. And sometimes people get overzealous and sometimes you might want to release one of those films to a festival and they're just like, look, this isn't good enough. And then you have to really take that, process that, and figure out how to be better. And I've had to do that for years and I'm still doing that. Every time I write something and I show it to either an industry 
colleague, or a friend. Inevitably, they will come back with notes. Wow, this is good. Wow, this is really fucking cool. Wow, that sucks, dude. What the hell are you thinking? And, and it's just, you need that. You really need that feedback. And that's why it really does suck when a festival just says, your film isn't accepted. And they don't tell you why. Because you can't learn from that. You can't build from that. There's no way you can improve. And so there have been times where I've reached out to festivals. 80% of the time they've gotten back to me with reasons. And it's helped a lot. Cleveland International was a big one for me that I really wanted to get into. Because A, I've wanted to support Ohio film forever. I'm trying to get more films made here by lobbying for a credit that can uh, increase Ohio's tax incentive for film to 100 million. And I have features that I want to shoot here that I'm currently trying to finance, which if it works out, there'll be another video about that in the future. Can't really talk about it right now. But cool stuff on the horizon. That's what I'll say. But in the case of Cleveland International, I submitted the film on the last possible day, the last day for a deadline. That's a big issue. Immediately, that's a big problem of mine. We had a lot of post-production issues, which I've talked about before in other videos, where we were trying to scramble to complete visual effects for certain sequences. And because of that, we were pretty late. So that automatically makes it harder for me to get in anyway, because they've probably already seen a lot of films that they've accepted in their minds, and they know they want to put there. Also, at 19 minutes, we're, we're a little long for a short. And like the original cut was like 25 minutes. And I, I cut, 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 cut. I mean, I made it as quick as I possibly could. And they also didn't provide any screener notes. And that happens. So how do you deal with a situation like that? Do you just say, okay, well, I didn't get into the one festival I really wanted to get into. I guess the film is shit. I guess it's not going to be seen. Of course not. No, you just move on. You keep writing, you submit to other festivals, and you try again. It's that easy. It's that fucking easy. My friends and I have been talking a lot about this lately. I have two really great writer friends who we get together and we, we, we kind of pitch ideas to each other and we try to come up with things we'd like to do together. And we've all just decided that there's nothing holding us back. It's so easy, especially for creative people, to just defeat yourself constantly in your mind. You have ideas, you have talent, you have ability, or at least you have the drive to learn or the drive to succeed. So what's stopping you, you know? I always ask that of myself constantly. What in my life is a roadblock to achieving my goals? And I try to figure out if there is an actual roadblock for real or if it's just something I've created subconsciously that doesn't even exist. Most of the time, it doesn't exist. And it's just myself pummeling myself into the ground until I don't feel like being creative anymore. I'd say it was about when I turned 30 that I just said, screw this, man. This is, I'm done waiting, you know? I sometimes listen to a podcast called The Movie Crypt, and they often ask their guests at what point in time in their lives did they realize that getting a film made wasn't just going to fall into their lap? And they had to basically dig and dig and dig until they got something done just out of pure sweat, blood and tears. And I think for me, it was around when I turned 30 and I just realized I should just work my ass off. And that's one of the biggest reasons you saw less reviews last year, because I spent most of the year just writing feature screenplays and talking to people, making phone calls, having meetings. I've gotten farther professionally than I ever have in my life just in the past year, purely from drive alone. Most of my writer friends have told me the same thing. Let's say you have a great script, a great screenplay, and you think you could probably get this funded and financed if you just knew who to talk to. That's awesome. You should have three though. And all of them told me the same thing. I wrote a script that most people seem to like as I as they read it, but I wrote one script that most people seem to like. And they said, dude, you need to have at least three. My one friend wants at least six before he starts pitching for real, like trying to get his movies made. And so having multiple scripts as well is a great thing because let's say also the blacklist, people go to that site to see some of the best reviewed unproduced scripts 
that are being tossed around the industry. And you can go to that site and you can put one of your scripts on there. But the issue is, let's say you wrote the fucking best script they've ever read, but it's kind of expensive and you've never directed or you've never had a film made before. They're going to call you up and they're going to say, that's great. What else you got? And if that's all you've got, that might be the end of the conversation. You may have written the next Inception, but since you've never made a movie before, they don't want to finance it. You need to have at least three, you know, other conversations you can have with these people who are interested in you. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. The space I'm in is just trying to build a catalog so that I can then have that opportunity where if someone does read something I write, likes it, but doesn't want to finance that exact script and they ask me what else I have, I can say, here you go, tons of stuff, check it out. Let me direct something. So I'm, I'm working pretty hard right now to get things like that done. And I'm excited about Notes from Melanie being in festivals. And I'm just, I'm happy to be sharing these things with you guys. And I hope that with this segment, I can not only talk about this aspect of my life more and my career goals, but also, and more importantly, reach some of you guys who are maybe in a similar place, trying to figure out what you want to do career-wise with your films or your scripts or whatever it is you're working on. And I hope that in some way, this segment can help. And I also want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible online community with tons of classes, over 25,000 classes in things like design and business. There's writing and film-based things. You can learn just about anything there. It's extremely helpful for people who are trying to figure out what they want to do in this industry, especially film. There are so, so many helpful videos and classes and tutorials about editing and creative writing. Some of the ones that I specifically liked were the Writer's Toolkit, Six Steps to a Successful Writing Habit, and Creative Writing Essentials, Writing Standout Opening Scenes. I cannot tell you how important the opening scene is for your script, especially if you've never had a film made before, if it's a spec script, many readers will toss your script in the garbage if the first 10 pages don't hit them. That is the absolute truth. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And you can find so many classes just like that that can help you with those very things on Skillshare. The premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Skillshare is also super affordable at less than $10 a month, but the best part is that if you use this link, which is in the description below, the first 500 of you can get a two month free trial. So please do visit that link and check out Skillshare. I really do think it's a helpful tool for people who are trying to break into the film industry. And even if that's not your goal, there's so much else on there that you can learn from. So guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of My Filmmaking Journey. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'll have more updates for you guys very soon. Lots of things to come uh, that I really am excited to talk about. Thank you guys as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.